Blog Talk Radio. Now, get up out your seats. Coming to the ring. Now, but I'm wondering if you can bring in one win. No losses. Undefeated in the streets. Weighing in over 300 pounds. I hate radio. When the brown bell is ringing in the ring, then I'll be singing. I'm here to get that crowd loud. But I'm wondering if you can bring it. When the brown bell is ringing in the ring, then I'll be singing. But I'm here to get that crowd loud. But I'm wondering if you can bring it. When the brown bell is ringing in the ring, then I'll be singing. But I'm here to get that crowd loud. But I'm wondering if you can bring it. Hello. 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 We are live on IWE Radio. (laughs) Hold on just one moment, ladies. We're going to give you a proper introduction. Ladies and gentlemen, once again, Wednesday night, 8 p.m. Central Standard Time, 6 p.m. on the sunny coast of California. And you are listening to IHWE Radio. I am your host, Michael McCurdy, the creator and author of Encyclopedia WCCW, and joining me as always in Fort Worth, Texas, is my co-host, the owner and founder of IHWE, the Southern Wrestling Hall of Fame, and every other known thing under the sun that's going to have the IHWE name on it, Mr. David Fuller. David, how are you doing tonight? Everybody's on mute. What happened? Just hang on a second. Okay. Uh, okay, I got Okay, Michael. Okay, hang on one second. Anyway, uh, right. that was me. <laughs> Michael, I'm excited to be here. We've had the Million Dollar Man. We've had Stan Larry Hansen. We've had Mick Foley. We've had Jim Cornette. We've had Kevin Bonner. But tonight, we have a group of individuals, of ladies, that work their butts off to bring the world a pop culture phenomenon. We're talking about the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. We've seen their story, and tonight we're going to hear some stories, and it's going to be awesome. So we're going to uh, get this thing rocking and rolling. And, uh, Michael, you put this thing together, so kudos to you. I'm excited tonight, fans. Uh, if you if you loved Glow like everybody else did and respected those ladies for going out there, putting on an entertaining show, learning how to wrestle, not just going out there, to disrespect the business, busting their butts, learning how to wrestle, and doing it better than a lot of other people that were doing it at that time, uh, then you're going to love this show tonight. But uh, I want to thank these ladies for coming on. But, Michael, uh, this is your gig tonight, so I will follow. Do your thing. Well, I got to say, man, just before I bring these ladies on, that it is an honor to have them with us here tonight. I've had the chance to meet a few of them over the years at the CAC reunion. But like I told you a few days ago, When I'm on the phone and I'm having a conversation with four of the gorgeous ladies in wrestling, man, that was a childhood fantasy of mine when I was a boy. (laughs) 14, 15 years old, man, every Saturday morning, sitting in front of the TV watching the gorgeous ladies in wrestling. So to have them on here tonight, man, dude, it's it's the teenage years all over again. I almost want to pop in a DVD, sit back, and enjoy the memories once again. But ladies and gentlemen, we do have a special GLOW reunion show tonight on IHWE Radio. And we have a lot of numbers, a lot of callers coming in. I'm just going to go on oh. down the line. Let these oh, Michael, 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 so Michael, 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 yes. before that, what? Before that, well, you don't need to walk me, Stone Cold. Before that, okay. I know we had talked about doing something, and maybe before we get too into this, maybe we ought to do that, uh, if, you, if you don't mind, uh, talking about someone very special before we get too in, into this. You know what, David? You got a good idea there, and man, you're always the one, the man with the word, so I will let you handle the honors on that one. Well, I tell you what, ladies and gentlemen, when I started watching the gorgeous ladies of wrestling, uh, you know, I was I was a youngster, not, uh, and I'm not going to say that too many times because these ladies may want to hunt me down afterwards, but uh, <laughs> I, I was a youngster. 
but uh, a few of them stuck out to me. Uh, of course, I was I watched WWF Superstars every Saturday, and Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling down here in Dallas, Fort Worth, in syndication. It came on right before Superstars, and there was two women, two ladies, two individuals, two superstars that stuck out to me because of their size and their uh, their look. Uh, Mountain Fiji and Big Bad Mama. And oh, Big Bad! I watched Big Bad Mama, and I was like, "Oh my goodness!" I, I, you know, I was waiting for her to show up on Vince's television on all of Vince's top superstars. And then I'm watching Married with Children one night. Al Bundy's in Las Vegas hunting down Peggy because she sold the television, and she's lost all of his money. And to regain the money to get back home, he agrees to step into the ring with a glow wrestler. A couple of them walk by, and he thinks, oh, this is going to be a walk in the park. And then he has to go one-on-one with Big Bad Mama, and it was one of the most entertaining pieces of television I've ever seen, still to this day. And when that happened, glow became pop culture, just a, uh, just a part of pop culture. I saw the, the documentary, and it's unfortunate that Big Bad Mama uh, physically, no longer here. Of course, you always see here in spirit. Her legacy will be is immortalized. And uh, we have Little Mama on here tonight. I just want to say, as a, as a fan growing up, Big Bad Mama was my favorite. After seeing her on Larry Children and after watching that documentary, she was my favorite. And uh, God rest her soul. And uh, I just want to thank you, Little Mama, for allowing us to honor her tonight. What a legacy. Um, you know, all the glow girls left their mark on this business, but like I said, Big Bad Mama was my favorite. And uh, so, uh, yeah, I just wanted to say that. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, Michael, go right ahead, sir. Well, thank you, Dave, for handing me over the reins of my own show. One more week, man, and you're... (laughs) (laughs) Don't forget who hired you, Michael. I know who hired me, and I also know who made me his partner. So, therefore, yeah, we're not going into that one. The ladies not, aren't not. here to That's listen to us squabble. That's right. <laughs> Don't make me referee you, boys. I do carry a whip. <laughs> no, we got a lady with a whip here now. Uh oh, I'm tapping out. Oh, on that one. keep us in line. Yep, <laughs> somebody needs to. Mm-hmm. And of course. That lady with the whip would be none other than the lovely Gremlina. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing just fine. You just kind of keep that whip to the side, put that away. Dave and I promise we'll behave tonight. It's okay. <laughs> all, right, all right, the whip is put up for now, but if you boys misbehave. <laughs> all right, I think that's a threat, David. What how about you, man? <laughs> You know what? I'm not. Uh, okay. No, I, I I used to watch them on television, and I know what they can do. And you know, no, no, I'm. I'll be a good boy. I will. So no yeah. worries. I was about to say, man, you're smaller than Al Bundy, so you know you'd be yeah. butt-handed to. I am smaller than Al Bundy, and probably just as strong. So. Uh. Oh boy. Uh, we are also being joined on tonight's show by none other than Dallas. Dallas, welcome to IHWE Radio. Howdy, Michael. How y'all doing tonight? We are doing wonderful. Like I said, you know, David and I, this is an honor to have you girls on the show tonight because Glow, like you said, pop culture phenomenon, and also in the 80s, honestly, it was every teenage boy's dream, man. Come on, Saturday mornings, we got an hour of girls and, you know, with the sequins and the tights fighting and all that. Dude, it was better than anything Vince put on TV at that time. So, I mean, this is an honor to have you guys on tonight. Thank you very much. I'm so glad to be here. We are also being joined by the woman that you just heard from her just a moment ago. This show tonight is going to be dedicated to the memory of Big Bad Mama, one of the definite names that everyone remembers, the face everyone remembers. We've seen the Married with Children episode. We saw all the matches. Joining us tonight also on ICW Radio is Little Mama. How are you doing tonight? I'm doing good, Michael. It's an honor to be here, and I appreciate you honoring my mom. And I would do anything to make for sure that her fans are happy. She would want it that way. 
And we have a surprise guest because, unfortunately, due to time constraints, I don't know who else is on the line. Who else is joining us here tonight? Uh, I suppose that's probably me. <laughs> and this is Brian Westcott from Idaho. Nah, Brian, you're not the gorgeous lady at wrestling. What are you doing on my show, man? <laughs> what the hell? I got set up, David. Yeah, you did get set up. All right. That's fine. Brian is, Brian works for us for ITV Radio. He's a great research analyst, and uh, he probably knows more about these ladies than we do. So we're going to keep Brian on the does. line. And since, we, since we have Brian on the line, let's give him a chance. Man, Brian, is there anything you would like to say to our guest tonight? Well, I just wanted to say it's a real honor to get to talk to uh, the Blow Girls once again. I uh, got a copy of the documentary from uh, Little Egypt at the recent TAC reunion. I was just blown away by it. I couldn't believe it. Now, I got into wrestling in 1989, so right about near the tail end of Blow's uh, era of wearing down. But it, it's a really good documentary. I highly recommend fans to get it. If you were a big fan of Glow, get that while you can. Definitely a great human interest story, well, especially with the reunion, seeing um, Mount Fiji's uh, response to everybody. And that was just uh, icing on the cake. So uh, way to go with the documentary. and real pleasure to talk with the Glow girls. <laughs> You know, it, it is a great documentary, Brian, and and we're gonna. I don't want to. I don't want to blab too much because these ladies are on here and they're the stars. Even if you don't know, even if you're, I mean, you know, I didn't know half the story on the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. I didn't know half the story. I mean, uh, you know, and, and I don't think anybody does unless you watch that documentary. Everybody needs to see it because there is so much work. These ladies went through so much day in, day out, training with Mondo Guerrero. You went through so much day in and day out. You were uh, dealing with network executives. I mean, it's a really good story. And then, of course, you know, years have gone by. And, uh, of course, Mountain Fiji being, in the, you know, going through the health issues she has. And then the reunion. It is a gut-wrenching documentary. And if you're if you respect this business and you really respect this business, you need to watch it because uh, I gained a whole new respect for all of you ladies and the organization when I watched it. So, uh, yes, anybody who hasn't seen it, get it. It's all it's on Vudu. It's on Amazon Instant Video. It's available on DVD. Just uh, search below and whatever streaming or device you have, and it'll pop up somewhere. It is amazing. So I just wanted to say that. Amazing story. <laughs> All right, Michael, I did not set you up. Let's rumble. Come on. <laughs> I was a set it, man. Although, you know, I mean, I'm sure Brian would probably go a round or two. I mean, he might do the Al Bundy thing, go a round or two with a, with one of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling. I'm sure he'd be up for that challenge, but we're going to – we'll we'll talk about that later. <laughs> All right, let's rumble. For that, Michael. <laughs> Anyways, ladies, I'm just going to throw out this opening question. Just you know, We've seen the documentary. We've seen the show. A lot of us have seen the documentary. We've all seen Glow Wrestling through YouTube, through the shows in the 80s. From personal experience, what was it like to be a part of something that became a pop culture phenomenon? I know we've used that term a lot tonight, and we're going to use it a lot more. But personally, what was it like to be a part of something that became so big? Wow. Um, I'll start it. Um, I'm a long-time wrestling fan. I'm been watching wrestling since I was six years old. I got lucky. I tripped into my uh, tent and glow, and it's amazing the love and the respect of the fans. You didn't see, you saw it a little bit when you were filming and taping, but 20 some years later to interact and to have FaceTime and talk to and hear the love and respect and what we meant. It's just, it's humbling. It really is. Anyone else care to answer this question? I'm still trying to get used to the term pop phenomenon. I mean, when I when I started GLOW, it was the very, I was there for the very first season, 
And um, we were still trying to, you know, get it going then. We were, it wasn't very big then, but it sure went crazy afterwards. I think, well, uh, I think, I think absence makes the heart go fonder. And I told this to, uh, I told this to Black Bart the other day. I told Bart, uh, I said, you know, as, as each year passes, and now, thanks to all this new technology, YouTube and, uh, and the documentary, exactly. the documentary came out in the the best time because now you're on streaming devices that people can just click a button on their television or the game console, their Roku or their phone, and watch the documentary. Uh, it came out, I think, in the best time uh, thanks to, you know, I mean, just. So many things come together, and people just notice things, so they'll type in something like, tonight, people are listening to our show, and I guarantee you somebody is opening up another web browser, and they're opening up YouTube, and they're going to type in Glow Wrestling, and they're going to be right. watching, they're going to be watching what y'all did. Uh, you know, I, the documentary, I think, really, really helped. But, yeah, it is. It's pop culture phenomenon, and, uh, you know, Glow was... Married with Children, they could have went to Jim Crockett or Ted Turner or Vern Gagne. They went to Glow. <laughs> they went to the gorgeous ladies of wrestling and got them to do that spot. And Married with Children was like the hottest television show on TV at that time. So, I right. mean, that's amazing. So, y'all deserved every bit of it. I think at the time, I think Glow was, uh, I think Glow kind of went, you know, passed by the pastor in the early 90s, but absence makes the heart grow fonder, and every year that new people, new fans discover what y'all did, it's just going to get that way every year. Exactly. I remember the first year us girls used to get our get our costumes on and, and parade through the casino and try to get people to come in to fill the stands up to film our shows. You know, that's how, that's how unpopular we were back then, but I think it's kind of cool now with, like you said, all this technology, because... I've got grandsons that now can look me up on Google. They can Google the grandma. That's pretty cool. Google it, it the cool. grandma. There's something to hashtag right there. I know. <laughs> I'm not, I'm not. Dallas is a grandma. <laughs> yes, she is. <laughs> Woo. Yep. My, Michael, we've got a three. We got a three two three number. Uh, three two three area code. Who is calling? Hollywood. Hollywood. Hey, Hello, Hollywood. Hey, Hollywood. There you go. She made uh, it. I, I got away for a little bit, so how is everybody? Awesome. Hey, Holly. Hi, honey. Hey, hey Dallas. Dallas. Oh, Hollywood. Hi, Dallas. I don't want to thank you. I don't want to thank you for joining us tonight. Uh, we 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 just got started a few minutes ago, and we're talking about how Glow has become a pop culture phenomenon over the years. I mean, thanks to YouTube, thanks to that documentary. Uh, streaming devices, everything else. Now, I mean, you can watch Glow pretty much any time you want. Michael has put out the question to the uh, ladies that are on the line. We'll put this out to you. Uh, looking back now, how did it, how does it feel knowing that you were a part of something that has become a piece of pop culture history? Are you asking me, Hollywood, to talk? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh my God. I think it's awesome. Um, you know, everything that we did back then, you know, I don't think any of us even knew, and you guys could back me up there, knew really no how idea. popular that show was. We had no idea. Yeah, no you know? idea. And no idea at all, and there was no there was no attitudes. We just did our job, you know, and, and we would just, you know, go from town to town and airport to airport. Boy, when they started going, oh. <gasps> Look, there's Fiji. Look, there's the farmer's daughter. There's, you know, Vine, yeah. whatever. Yeah. You know, you're just like, whoa. You turn your head for a second, you know, and you're like, whoa. But you know what? None of those girls ever thought, oh, you know. But to feel all of that today, it gives me a big smile on my face. I'm, I'm honored. I'm humbled by it. I think it's pretty cool. Considering well, that first year, we used to walk through the casino and get people in to fill up. This. Remember that? Remember that, Hollywood? <laughs> we had to stash out those tickets. <laughs> we used to get well, free tickets. Please come see our show. Yeah, <laughs> well, I remember those people, they looked at me like, what? 
Let me tell yep. you ladies something. You girls know I've said it before. You first season ladies are why I was in the third season. You started it. Y'all are the legends. I was just a, I was just along for the fun ride on that roller coaster. <laughs> it, it's a, it was and, and a and a roller coaster it was. <laughs> Thank you. I have a uh, I have a question for all the uh, ladies on the line, and uh, one of you can and can start and go down the line. Uh, if you obviously what the group did, the organization, the the uh, the athletes, because that's exactly what what y'all are. Uh, you did so many things right. Looking back, is there anything like I mean, you say now you had no idea it was going to turn into this, you know? Like you did, but you you know said, hey, we're going to get, we need more money. <laughs> was there anything that you would do differently? One thing, a couple of things. Looking back, if you go back, and, and and you had a time machine, and you knew that twenty, you know, fifteen, twenty years from now, this thing's going to be just pop culture phenomenon. That's going to be our best word for tonight. That's going to be our best phrase because we're going to keep saying it. <laughs> hashtag pop culture phenomenon. Hashtag glow. Uh, if you had any idea, a time machine, what would you go back and do differently? Let's go down the list here, and if anybody would like to start. Okay. Well, me, Dallas, personally, myself, I think I, I would have stuck with the show a little bit longer. I wouldn't have left so soon. Um, I would have taken it a little more serious. At the beginning, I kind of thought it was like a joke. You know, it, it really – it didn't seem that serious in the first season. Um, I guess afterwards it did get that way, as we all see. But um, I would have taken it a little more serious. I would have definitely stuck with it a little bit longer. I dip, I had personal reasons why I had to leave when I left, but I would have worked them out somehow had I known it was going to become what it became. All right, next. <laughs> um, Hollywood. I would say uh, I did all four seasons, and I did the pilot. So looking back, I wish that I would have been able to do other things. You know, we stuck in one spot only. Why didn't I go out and get myself an agent? Glow was really interesting with that. They did not push us into another direction, and they didn't want us to, I don't think so. No, Um, they didn't. Go ahead. So uh, what you're saying, Molly? Um, I'm with Dallas. I would have, uh, well, I left because Holly was there. I blew my knee out. And it got to the point of when I was on tour, I did some soul searching. And if I couldn't give this 110%, I felt it was best if I left. And then there was some personal family reasons underlying, but, I would have liked to have stayed longer. I would have liked to have really did more in the ring. I mean, I was just an annoyance outside the ring, but what an annoyance, right, guys? <laughs> Who Who's speaking? I'm sorry. Who was that speaking? Hollywood. It's Grimlina. Oh, Grimlina. Hi, sweetie. Okay, yeah. How's my gorgeous? Uh, I'm wonderful. It's humid as heck out here, man. I... <laughs> I do like the weather too. here. It's humid in Virginia too. <laughs> yeah. Little little mama, uh, if you if, if you could go back, was, is there anything you would do differently? Okay, is still with little, little mama still there? Okay. I think we lost her. Okay. Uh-oh. Hopefully, we'll get her back online. Yeah, it looks like though that call was dropped. Happens all the time. Especially with cell phones, we'll keep an eye out and see well, if she comes back on the line. Um, I was Big Mama's roommate. Um, little Mama would have liked to have been, been in the ring with us. If she could go back in time, she would have liked to have been a wrestler with us. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can understand that. I can understand that. Um, tell, um, let me see, Michael, what do you got next? Back well, I wanted to here. go back to what, what Dallas was saying there just a few minutes ago about, you know, the kids or grandkids are going on there and Googling grandma. What is it like now that, you know, you, you've got family members, you know, small children and all that, and just kids in general, they can actually go on YouTube and all that. They go back, they look at yourself, 
and they realize that, hey, wow, that's, you know, that's mom, that's grandma, that's grandma's friend. What is that like now, you know, the kids now, seeing what you did 30 years ago or however many years ago? <laughs> well, first of all, I look a whole lot different than I did back then. And they, they said, that's grandma? <laughs> Boy, she sure looks different. And then next, they they didn't know I was as tough as I was back then, and I let them know I can still do it. I just I I can still give a drop kick. It's just not quite as high. <laughs> <laughs> but you know they're they're proud of me. I believe they're proud of me, and and they like to brag about me to their little friends, you know. And I'm proud of that. It's kind of cool that they can all go on Google and just Google me, you know, and and I don't have to have tapes, thank God, because I. I don't think I got a VHS player around the house here, and that's all I got. Marma Wrestling is on VHS, but um, I need to get somebody to transfer that stuff on a CD. If anybody out there wants to do that for me, <laughs> well, well, well I'll ask Ursula for those. Get those those DVDs from Ursula. The one thing that I I get a little annoyed about, and I will say it on air, I I I want to see more um, first and second season matches and. It, you know, Ursula's putting out the third and fourth season. I get it. She was yeah. mostly around that era, but I'd like to see more, more season one, more season two. And, of course, you were on season one, Debbie. Right. And so and, and your matches were awesome. I'll tell you guys, when I first met her, and, and I may forgive me if I have timing and things mixed up, but, man, I saw her, and this girl knew what she was doing. She was just, and I'd look at her, and I was looking at this tall, voluptuous, smart, gorgeous girl who knew her stuff. I was scared. <laughs> she scared me. I was like, oh, she's going to kick my butt. No. <laughs> she's going to kill me. <laughs> You are awesome, and just to see, to see, and just the weight with the confidence that you stood it around that ring, and you knew your stuff. You were just amazing. You're still amazing, but just I just you know you were perfect. You were like a perfect example of a, a, a of a wrestler. And and then and when I heard you go, you weren't sure if this was a joke because you were doing pro pro wrestling, and you came into sketches. And you know, a more of a variety show, you know. So exactly, I'm sure yeah. Was, I'm sure there was a lot yeah. of stuff going through your head. Right. I went. Yeah. I went from big time wrestling to comedy sketches. It was just yes, kind of you, you know, it was comedy. Like a it was, joke. It, it was for you. It was hard like, to what? take it seriously. It really yes. was. And thank you very much for those compliments, sweetie. I appreciate that. Well, well it's, it's I'll say this. I'm glad that I'm. I was a heel, so. I never got. I never had to worry about getting my butt kicked by Hollywood. Thank God, being one of my favorites. <laughs> and I sure as heck didn't want to get my butt handed to me by Dallas after that brass knuckles match. <laughs> <laughs> um, how, uh, uh, I'm going to ask this, and and uh, what what did y'all think of? Uh, and I don't know who worked with her and who didn't. Um, what did y'all think of Ivory? Uh, when Ivory later went on to do her thing, I mean, what was she like to work with? If any of you did in the Glow days, Hollywood, you can probably. Oh gosh, to I this. did a million. I did so many matches. I mean, first oh, of yeah. all, her. Uh, she was my first match. Her and yeah. Ashley were were Hollywood and Vine's first match. Right. Um, and, you know, and and it was a great match, and it was so spontaneous too because she did some things that I'm like, where the heck did that come from? So to me, uh, Lisa was already advanced in performing in front of people. She'd already been like a cheerleader, wasn't afraid of the camera, wasn't afraid of an audience where I had never been in front of an audience or a camera. So I was scared to death of the of the audience. So working right. with her, she was another person who, uh, you know, I was going to get my butt kicked, or you know, being being a heel. You know, the good girls always were were on, a, you know. But but working with her was was awesome, and I learned a lot. I mean, if you just when you're really young too, I think the best thing always to do is shut your mouth and listen, um, and watch because <laughs> you'll learn a lot more if, if you do that instead of running off your mouth. And I've learned that in all the years. You know, you learn a lot. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Lisa picked it up pretty quick. I don't know if you know this, Michael, but I was originally hired on by the Glow producers to uh, train the girls. Train. Mm-hmm. Um, 
Yeah, I was a, I was originally on, at a trainer there in Vegas, and uh-huh. one day there was a county fair there in Las Vegas, and me and some of the girls went to the county fair, and I bought myself a little cowboy hat, and I come back to the hotel, <laughs> and I'm walking around with a cowboy hat, and Matt Simber seen me with the hat, and he said, wow, you look pretty cute with that cowboy hat. You should be Dallas. So that's how I became Dallas. But I was there to train the girls, and Lisa did. She picked stuff up really fast. She was a quick learner. Hollywood was, too, though. Don't, don't let her fool you. She picked it up quick, too. She was really good. I remember spending about a day, a day and a half in the ring with her, teaching her to how to drop kick. Remember that, Hollywood? <laughs> she got it, though. When she got it, she got it. Yeah, yeah it, took looking, me, it took me some time, too. Looking, you know what I mean? Looking, uh, like, looking. Go ahead. No, it's okay. I know that we're going to do that sometimes tonight. It, it, it's no problem at all. Uh, feel free to step on uh, me and Michael anytime. Uh, you know, it makes me, you know, now that we're, uh, you know, we are where we are, it makes me think Hollywood and Dallas, I mean, you know, maybe, you know, had, you know, you two had gotten called up by, you know, uh, World Wrestling Federation, uh, World Championship Wrestling, ECW. I mean, Ivory went up and did so well and was right. so respected. Y'all could have done, you know, I, I, I wish that more of the Glow Girls, and, and I wish this then and I wish it now, I wish more of y'all would have gotten opportunities. Well, because can I, can I you reiterate when, you, when you're... Go ahead, go question. ahead, retort whatever you want. Okay, okay. So, WW, when they were WWF, came to Los right. Angeles. They came, yep. and I had somebody that sent me there. I was right in the middle of a broken leg. I'd broken my right leg, tip fib wrestling. So when I went down there, I was only, gosh, I don't know, uh, maybe eight weeks into the broken leg. And I hobbled down there. I wore sweatpants so that no one would see how atrophied my leg was. But I had a hard time. I was one thing I couldn't. So I got in the ring, and I started wrestling with one of their guys. And um, they're, like, asking me all these questions. They were real interested. They're like, who trained you? I said, Wanda Guerrero. And, you know, that was my first trainer. They're like, oh, sure. they're writing stuff down. And right. I'm getting more nervous, more nervous, because I'm thinking there is no way in hell that I can wrestle for a company with this broken leg. And I didn't want to tell them, but the honest person came out of me. And I said, and the reason I'm limping is because I have a broken leg. And the agent was like, what is your, what did you, what? Did you lie? And so I did not lie. And so, but that's okay. You know what I mean? You have an opportunity sometimes, a window. If it's meant to be, it is. And, you know, I hold no, there's no grudges. There's no, oh, God, I wish I would have. Sure. But, but it is what it is. And I told them the truth, you know, and then goodbye. <laughs> but, yeah, Lightning and I went down, and a few other girls were down there. And it was a great opportunity to at least be able to get into the ring with one of their guys and, you know, but I just couldn't do anything. I just, I couldn't. No way. So there was my opportunity. That was an opportunity I wasn't even aware of. Nobody, I was probably too busy at the time. I was already wrestling. Um, I was doing the Carl Lauer. Carl Lauer was taking me all over the place at the time. So that's how I was dealing. I have, I was a single mom of a four-year-old son at the time. So who knows? Yeah. Who knows what would have happened? Yeah. Right. Okay, well, there's something I didn't know. Michael, go ahead. See what happens, you know? That's what <laughs> happens. And you know what, though? I think if I really, really wanted it, I'd already been on TV for four years doing those wrestling. I just, I, you know, then you get to the point where I need a break, you know? Yeah, and I, right. I, so I wanted to go out and party with my friends. I'm only in my 20s, and I'm like, yeah, we've been, we've been in Vegas. We've been traveling. I'm doing four matches, you know, every night, busting my ass, doing these sketches, remembering everything. Right. I just want a break. Right, sure. right. So I didn't know if I was going to continue, and, of course, I did. And, you know, I started my own company, Hollywood Productions. Yes, it's it's, it's cat fighting. It's a little pro wrestling. It's a little bit of everything. And I think, you know, I, I sometimes I talked to Queenie about this a couple of days ago. I'm like, I have still been doing what I'm doing. Yes, I, no, I'm not wrestling live. No, you know, I'm not on WWE, but I have still continued to do it and and produce the stuff, you know, regardless if it's on another level, you know. It it may not be TV level, but 
but I right. continued well, it. You still, love, and, you still love the business, and you still love the camaraderie, and you still absolutely. love, the, you know, you still love the, the, you know, the sisterhood, I could call it. I mean, you love the fact that there's so much respect, and that is what I respect about all of you, because you do love it, because you don't do it for that long, and you still don't go to conventions, you still don't go to right. meet things, you still don't do things, unless you love it. Unless you love it. That's why I continued it. You know, and I don't have kids, and I'm not married. I mean, I have a wonderful boyfriend of of 12 years, and um, and, uh, I have my nieces and nephews, you know. uh, And it's it's pretty cool. So that's why I could continue. I can see why the other ladies, you know, did not. They, They went on. They have children and husbands and grandkids. I think it's awesome. (laughs) <laughs> I got five kids and three grandkids over here now. I love that. Yeah. That's awesome. And uh, Michael, I'm the, I, I have to say you have to love it. I agree with Hollywood. I'm a manager for an independent wrestling organization. Awesome. I was the commissioner for a year of this independent wrestling organization. That's great. I'm four foot eight friggin' inches tall. I am by no means anybody's Vision of oh, you're, you're adorable. I'm just an ankle biter. She's so cute. I'm just an ankle biter. What can I say? You know, but I, I live funny. it. You know, and the thing that makes it for me, and I think the ladies will agree, it's the fans. When they come up and say, do you realize, do you know what you meant to me growing up? Do you know oh. that you got me through this tough time or your show gave me inspiration to try something that I would not have normally done. And that's what I think is why we love it and why I still do it. Yeah. I just like, like, to like a drug. Yes, it is. I love to see the look of, of the kids' faces. Like, we'll do conventions. I do a ton of conventions during the year, not just CAC, but we're there, we're doing autographs, and you're meeting, you know, young kids. I went out, you guys, in April uh, with a company called Beauty Slammers out of Nova Scotia. It was a two-week wow. tour. I, I was um, the guest of honor, and I went in the ring, and I also announced, but I'm telling you, those group of pro wrestlers, Bambi Hall is one of them, um, which is an amazing wrestler, and watching those girls in front of a live audience, you guys, every night it brought back so many memories that those awesome. girls, they gave 110 every single night. They had nice. bruises all over their bodies. And I was just, I had so much respect, but those girls, you should have seen the respect that they had for me, and it was just, it made me cry at the end of when I left. They're like, please don't go, please don't go, please don't go, and it was, you just had to be there, because they they were just wonderful people to work with. I can't say more about all of them. They were just wonderful wrestlers, and I hope to see those ladies, you know, more, because they're young awesome. ladies, and they're going to go far, definitely. Well, I'm going to leak something now. There's a California promotion here that has asked me to come in and, and manage Melissa Anderson. And Fair leader Melissa, yes. Yeah, she was, on, she was on at the CAC. We were on the belt together. Yep, that's right. Yes. You go, so girl. I get, go back, I get to get back in the business as a manager for a little bit. That would be awesome. It's a blast. It's a blast. I, know, I can't love wait. it. Have a shot of crown roll awesome. for me, girlfriend. Yeah. Oh, I definitely will. I'll let you guys know when that happens too. It's going to be sometime in October, I guess. Keep us posted. Definitely. We do allow name dropping. If you'd like to uh, mention the name of that federation, you know, we we do allow a little name dropping around here. So. Oh, beauty you slammers. You know what? I wish beauty slammers. Ladies of wrestling. They were out of Nova Scotia, Canada. Um. I'm trying to remember all the names to all the girls that were on there. Uh, Melissa, do you guys know uh, Deeb? Uh, De- oh, what are your names? Serena. Serena Deeb was on that. That's a former, I think, WWE. Yeah, she girl. was in the Straight Edge. She was in the Straight Edge Society with that's CM Punk. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Serena was on that. Um, and then there's a one girl that's in Mexico right now. Uh, her name is Sarah Stock, Sarita, also known as Sarita. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. She reminded me, you guys, of a younger Lisa Moretti. She 
was just amazing to watch. Wow. Well, yeah. Awesome. Anyway. Yeah. Cool. All right. Awesome. Michael, right, well, we're uh, being I joined now. We've got, got questions. Yeah. I do, yeah. We're being joined by, we've got Little Mama back on the line here. Welcome back, uh, Are you there? Hi, you guys. Sorry. Kids, i, I got to go back yeah. to my dinner. I apologize. So we've got Little Mama, you're going to take my spot. So Hollywood is out. Thank you all for letting me speak a little bit and enjoy the rest of your conversation. Love Hollywood. Promote your website, you Hollywood Productions. Go, go ahead and get your plug out there. There you go, Hollywood Productions, and it's spelled H O L L Y W O U L D Productions dot com. Yay! Thank you. Thank you Thank so you much, much for having me come out. All right, guys, have a good one. Love you. you too. Love you all. Love you. All have you. a good Bye-bye. one. Thanks, Michael. Well, you too. Okay, Michael, sorry about that. I'm in a very busy area, and the call got dropped. So. Okay, we deal with we deal with cell phones and the drop calls on here on a regular basis. So, uh, David had asked a question right as you went off. Was that looking back? Is there anything that you would have changed? You know, looking back on what happened then, is there anything you would change to make something a little different or a little better? Yeah, I would have never deliberately pissed Matt Timber off. <laughs> what? Now, that's a name that comes yeah. up a lot. I just watched the documentary this morning. Um, can you tell us a little bit about – now, Matt Timber was the director of the show, if I recall that from the movie. Sure. Can you yeah. kind of tell us a little yeah. bit about the guy? Because he was kind of a – I don't think he was meant to be, but he kind of ended up being a kind of a major character in the documentary as far as, you know, everybody was talking about him. So can, yeah. can you tell Please us a little elaborate. bit about Matt Timber and how all that went? Please elaborate. <laughs> Okay, I'll elaborate, but let me first start by saying that he's not everyone's cup of tea, but he's definitely someone's shot of whiskey. Uh, <laughs> what was the man here in that part? The man was an entertainment genius, but he had no patience for impudence, ignorance, and children. And in all honesty, uh, looking back, I was 12 years old, so I was all three to him. <laughs> And uh, coincidentally, I wanted to wrestle, and uh, I was told to wait till I was 16. <laughs> so I made it my, uh, at a, in a 12-year-old's mind, I thought it was the best idea happening, but I made it my business to make sure that man saw me every time he turned around. And it didn't work so well in my favor. <laughs> so uh, I just... So volunteered with different girls when we were training and doing running through the matches and the practices and more training. I was always the go-to dummy for the ring. I always volunteered to be put in helicopter spins by Daisy. And uh, Grimlina was actually a roommate of my mom. We were like sisters. Yes. In the rest of the world were personal. They weren't professional. They weren't, you know... 12 years old. So, yeah, I kind of understand. But, you know, I, I love the industry. I watched my mom. I grew up. I actually was given the honor and the glory of the 20 year old as a for the Battle Royal in uh, Vegas. And I, I gave it my all, and none of the girls were mad, and you know, I you know, I always wanted to be a glow girl, and because of my mom, I actually got to be one. And and in my eyes, you always were a glow girl. I was a glow kid. <laughs> <laughs> well, I was about your size back then, and I still, you yeah. know. <laughs> yeah, and I'm bigger than you now. Yeah, everybody's bigger than me. That's all right, Grammy. Yeah, I got like that. that. You know. Hey. That's so the cool thing. Even though I hated Neil, the big girls man, always man. had my back. <laughs> I got your back. You get on my shoulders, honey. I know. <laughs> <laughs> right. Well, you know, if they ever decide to get the financing or the team or the provision stations or whatever the actual legalities of the case, 
may be. Mm-hmm. If they ever actually fully get Glow running and started again, I will be right there, first in line, with my costume and my makeup on. And, it, you know, it's just it, it's a major part of my life. It will never go away. And, you know, even though mom's gone, like you were saying, I can go to Netflix right now on my phone and pull up the documentary and hear her. And I'll be sitting here blubbering, so y'all don't want me to do that. <laughs> <laughs> we all blubber. You know, I love my mom, and I went through a real bout of jealousy when I was younger. I didn't want to share her with anybody. And when I her as much as I did, I had no choice. Well, you know, unfortunately, we little mama, mama. your mama was mama to all of us in season three. Right. She's well, everybody. I think in season one, I think in season one, my son was probably the only glow child, like you call yourself, in that season. And I used to fly him to Las Vegas from Sacramento about every other weekend. And his favorite character back then was, uh, oh, what's her name? She had the lollipops. Um, darn it. Debbie De- DeMont. DeMont uh, Sal- no. What was her name? Come on, help me out, girl. She had the big lollipop. Her husband was the uh, referee. Tammy. Tammy Jones. Tammy Jones, thank you very much. Tammy Jones, that, she was her and my son were best friends. He loved her. He was only four years old oh. though. <laughs> wow. But he used to yeah, well, Tammy. Yeah, mom joked me that I was a glow fan before she was ever a glow girl. You know, I watched <laughs> season one every day. It was on Saturdays. I used to beat feet in, throw my bike down on the porch, go in there and watch glow. Then I'd watch uh Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and I watch Go, and then I'll be back out in the street. So. <laughs> yeah, my son never got to really see it on TV. He just kind of grew up with watching it be filmed and all that stuff. So. Right. Well, you know, military brat and all. My mom was actually married to a military man, and oh. uh, he took very good care of all of us. We never wanted for anything, and, you know, just so that the world and the fans know, my mom will wrestle because she wanted to, not because she had to. My daddy took she care loved of us. Uh, I'm going to say she this. loved it. And I, and I loved mama, it. I didn't wrestle. For months, oh, I've, never, I've, paid, I've never charged for an autograph. I've never charged for an appearance. I've always paid my own travel, my own You know, I think uh, I think a perfect day, I think a perfect day uh, of television would be uh, Gorgeous Ladies of Wrestling, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, and Double Dare. <laughs> you got a perfect day of television right there. I'd be psyched. I know that. And uh, a little bit of uh, Mid Atlantic Championship wrestling, a little bit of WCW. There you go. There you, you know. go. And I mean, I grew up on. We had World Class Championship Wrestling down here in Dallas, Fort Worth. So, I mean, but like I said, I watched every Saturday. I watched Glow. It was on Channel 33 down here. It was syndicated. It came on right before WWF Superstars. And, uh, yeah. 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 It was awesome. I mean, but, you know, nobody, I, I, I will say this again. I implore everybody and anybody who calls himself a fan of wrestling or a student of the game, whatever you are, you are not, you have to watch this documentary. Because mm-hmm. you don't know what these ladies went through. You don't. So, and I didn't. I've been in the business, you know, uh, nearly 20 years. I just watched a documentary uh, maybe a year ago, and I didn't know. So, I mean, you know, it's just crazy. And you got you get the facts from the people who were there. It's not some unauthorized, one person's bitter tale. The people who were there who were instrumental or tell the story so it's awesome michael uh i know you i know me and you were talking and you had a question so go right ahead buddy well uh, yeah i just wanted to throw in real quick i actually watched that documentary again this morning just to kind of fill in some blank make sure i had all my facts straight and all that and it's like the third or fourth time i've seen it and it is a great documentary uh well worth it and i gotta say that in 2011 i believe was the first year they did a Semi glow reunion at the cauliflower. Yeah. And unfortunately, 
my well, not unfortunately, but my son was born was due like the same week of the reunion, so I was unable to make it, and I was pissed that I was not going to be able to go to Vegas and see the Glow Girls for the first time. So in 2012, Aww. I got my opportunity when I, when I went back to reunion, and I got to meet everyone. I met Lightning, I met Little Egypt. I met Big Bad Mama. I have her autograph. I got my picture with her and Little Mama. I got my picture with you guys. That, to me, was an honor. I mean, like I said, teenage, you know, fantasy here, being able to talk to the Glow Girls. When I was 14 years old watching it on TV, never thought that I was ever going to have a chance to meet any of them. So we say pop culture phenomenon. We're talking about how the documentary is so great. Glow was a major part of a lot of people's lives if you grew up in the 80s. Because that was it. It's Saturday mornings, you had your Saturday morning cartoons, and all but like noon is usually when Glow came on. So the little yeah. kids are watching their cartoons at noon. Big Brother could kick them out of the way and sit down and watch Glow or you know whatever <laughs> other wrestling <laughs> he wanted to see. Uh, yep, that's true. That's true. We were on syndicated TV here in Sacramento, my hometown, for twice a week. So it was pretty big here. In Virginia, it was once a week, and it was at 11 o'clock at night on Saturday nights. Yeah. Y'all stayed Saturday on television. Morning. Y'all stayed. It was Saturday morning and Sunday night here in Sacramento. Y'all stayed on television. You stayed on television in the syndicated market, and you did it in the late 80s when Vince McMahon uh, had already, you know, monopolized a lot of the market. Y'all right. stayed on. So y'all had a product that people wanted to see. Yeah. It was sports entertainment before sports entertainment was a was a thing. Uh, you know, Ben's came out and said it to get out of paying taxes in, in state and dealing with the athletic commission. But I mean, y'all had it too. But uh, it was a big thing. If, you know, people can say if, you know if anybody doesn't agree, that's fine. But back in the day, and I, you know, I was a kid then, but I read books and stuff, and I know more about it now. I I, I say I know more about it. I know more about it as a as a fan, not as somebody who was there, y'all stayed on television when a lot of people, and you did it for years, you did it for a few seasons um, before the landscape completely changed. <laughs> uh, but I think by the time the glow had already had had its run, I think the business, I think the business started to take a downward spiral altogether because then you got into uh, WWE. Uh, using the uh, Desert Shield as an angle, and you got into uh, WC, like Jim Crockett Promotions having to sell to Ted Turner to keep that going. I think the whole business started to take a plunge. World class had already come and gone down here. So I think the business as a whole started to plunge by the time Glow had, you know, had its run. But that's a big deal. Stay, not, it's not that you got on television, it's you stayed on television. <laughs> Right, right. Yeah. I know, I'm proud of that. I'm proud of that. Proud to be part of that. Um, sorry. Here's a piece of insider information. I was talking to our head writer, Stephen Bland, at one of the documentary filmings. Do you know that at one point, Glow was beating the WWF shows in ratings? I believe that. Yeah. Steve wow. said that there was a, a, a strong run where we were actually doing better than the WWE and ratings in the 80s. Wow. I believe it. Yeah, I mean, I, I believe awesome. it too. I believe, especially once people started uh, learning the characters and the performers. Mm-hmm. And I like, I, I think when Big Bad Mama was on Mary B. Children, I think that did. Yeah just a lot for the promotion as a whole. Oh, yes, definitely. Uh, Well, all right, Michael, I'm stepping on your toes. What what do you got next, buddy? Well, since you brought up uh, Married with Children and Big Bad Mama and all that, we've been talking about, like, some of the characters a lot. And two of the the biggest characters that we remember from GLOW were Big Bad Mama and Fiji. We tried to get Mm -hmm. Fiji on here. Uh, made a few calls, unfortunately, not able to do it. We have dedicated this show tonight to the memory of Big Bad Mama. I want to give these ladies a chance, starting off with Little Mama first. If you can kind of share a story or a favorite memory 
a big bad mama because she is one of the names that people recognize. We all seen the married with children. She was one of the names. Is there anything you know, like a favorite memory or story you could share with us? Somebody else will have to go. I never got to meet her. I, I wish I had, but she was after me. I had left the first season, and I never got to meet Big Mad Mama, but um, I, I heard a lot of stories about her. But I'm going to let somebody else go ahead because I can't personally say anything. Right. Okay. Well, I don't have any one favorite because it was so much of a large part of my life, but... I think one of my mom's favorite trips with the girls from what she, you know, came home and bragged about was the Louisiana trip. She oh, yeah. She said that it gave, it gave a lot of the girls the chance to experience something other than California and Vegas, that it taught a lot of them a lot of things, and a lot of them learned to trust her and that there were real bonds made during that trip. And, uh, you know, with a couple of girls, I won't drop any names because that's ugly, that had threatened to walk. And mom prided herself in talking them into staying. And, you know, just overall, she was everybody's mama. It didn't matter whether she was tossing Donahue around in a ring or tossing Al Bundy around in the ring or whether she was just tossing me around in the ring to perfect her moves so she wouldn't hurt uh, Zelda when they had their uh, doubles match. She was so worried about hurting the little girl. But Gremlina didn't never give her any fear of being hurt. <laughs> Gremlina had bigger balls than half the girls. Oh, oh, yeah. She, oh, yeah. Say that personally does. because I lived with her. I got to hear about the muscle certain at night. I got to run and fetch the ice packs and, you know, oh. and, the, and, and the watching TV at night and, you know, the movies on HBO and my dad talking his crap about how, you know, we were women, we shouldn't be doing these things. <laughs> He yeah, my favorite memory would be my mom actually accepting the responsibility of being everyone's mama and enjoying it. Definitely. And I think I think that's when I learned to share her. You know. So yeah, my favorite memory is my mama's trip to Louisiana because I got all kinds of stuff when they got home. <laughs> I have to say. Being her roommate, I have a different outlook on Mama because she was Mama, but she was a friend. And Louisiana, yeah, it was, I mean, going with her to the actual voodoo museum and meeting the actual Louisiana voodoo queen, taking the tour, and walking the French Quarter with your Mama, great memories. You're right, it was a bonding town. It was you know, and I think uh, when we hit Tennessee, that's when she reunited with her mother. And I think the scariest memory was we were outside the Glow Arena, and your mother had that big old red pickup truck. Oh, big red. <laughs> and it wouldn't start. And somebody, I forget who handed her a lighter to see what was going on because it was dark and the battery exploded and we were so afraid that she had gotten she was permanently scarred from battery blowing up and the gas flashing back that was yeah, so it did scary cause permanent but you know scarring. what mm-hmm. you know what she brought her butt to rehearsal the next day she was in that ring and she set an example yep And, you know, we both became certified automotive technicians after that because she didn't want another woman to ever be stranded. Yep. Yeah. That's amazing. uh, That's truly awesome. That really is. Uh, We We, uh, we we have, Michael, we have two numbers on here. Uh, Do you want to bring one on and see uh, if they're uh, with the organization or if they just have questions or what? That's what we're going to do. We're going to bring on the 818795 number. Okay, you on IWE Radio. Quick, Hello? Yes, who's calling? Hello? Uh, Rocky yes. Astor. 
<laughs> Hi, Roxy. We have another go, girl, David. Hey. Right on. I hey, just happened to was on the computer. Hi. Hey, little mama. Hi, Roxy. I have a story of you for you. <laughs> Go on ahead. The, okay, how you had to break into my car to get the costumes out. <laughs> uh, oh my God! Yeah, do you remember that? And you had to crawl in the back seat. I was like, yeah. how does she know how to do this? <laughs> I, I really don't brag about my car thieving days. <laughs> I, hey, hey, hey! I didn't say anything about it, about that. That was a good thing. You saved well, us. You totally yeah, saved us. You did a good deed. Far for a good reason this time, instead of I just wanted the CDs. Okay. So yeah. Um, my mom used to keep her. I wanted to <laughs> under pressure. You were good. Hard to, to get my mom's CDs because she always had the good stuff: the Teddy Pendergrass, the Barry huh? White. <laughs> she had the real music. Not yeah, that I shocked cool, the brother and I want to sleep with your sister music. So, yeah, music. I exercise dearly, but I do have to go Radio program. as long as I can. Look for my fan page. And I love you guys. I got to go. Okay? All love right. You love you, little mama. Bye, little mama. Thank you for joining us. Well, hey, I... Hey, I want to share my my story. It's actually Go I ahead. have a, a favorite. I have a favorite match. It's not really a story. Go ahead. But Big Bad Mama was in my favorite match ever, and I'm sure a lot of people remember. It's the one with Dementia and I, where we exchange characters. And uh, I just remember uh, doing that match with Mama, and it was just. I watched it. I think it was last week, and. Uh, just to see her face and the way she had us like under control and dementia is amazing with these eyes. And then I look back and that is like, to me, my favorite match with mom. And I think maybe my only one with her, you know, the fans will know more than I will. Don't they, Grammy? They usually know more than we do. Oh, yeah. do. <laughs> the fans are amazing with trivia. They sure yes. are. Yes, they do know. Yeah. Much more than we do. And that's why I like talking to them. So, yeah. But I, I had I had to call with Grammy on the phone. I'm going to share a Roxy story. A what? A Roxy story. Uh oh. Uh oh. <laughs> hey, we all want to hear a Roxy story. No, you don't. <laughs> oh, Roxy sure we do. <laughs> Roxy is an amazing woman, but what? And she is. People probably know this. She's an amazing hairdresser. Everybody, I cannot tell you, I would not be Grimlina without the hair cut, color, and style that Roxy gave me. The silver hair with the black stripe, she did that. Uh-huh. uh-huh. <laughs> All right, that that only cost uh, me $5, yeah. Grammy, for you to say that, right? I'll send you the check. <laughs> Damn, <laughs> Great advertising. Yeah, so that, that hair was something I else. Remember, we, Matt was like, you've got to do something, and I made the joke about, well, Stripe had the white stripe, and then I said, well, why don't I have a black stripe? And then we had to color strip my hair, dye it the platinum blonde, and put the black Oh, my in. gosh. Yes, yeah. I just saw a picture of it recently, and I was kind of looking at you and Stinky, but yours was totally different. It, the way it fits you, it was different than Stinky's. And then I also did um, Beastie's, her, uh, her mohawk, too. So I kind of did the outrageous hair of the group. I mean, not a lot of us were blessed with a good dye of the long locks, but uh, Grammy, you were definitely fun to do. You get that good hair for that. I I, I, I could not have been Berlina without the look. You, you brought it together. Uh, I think, uh, real quick, I think we have another caller on the line, another 818 number. So let's bring Brandon right. on to see who we've got. Okay, num- uh, 818-262-2183, you're on the air. Who is this? What is that, TV? Proceeding now. Oh, at the door disco. Yeah. MTV, how y'all doing? Hey, MTV. Hey. 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 <laughs> yeah, I've been listening to your mama stories, and I remember the mama slap fight when we were in New Orleans. Mama and Fiji got into a slap fight in her match, and mama broke <laughs> Fiji's eardrum. Oh, oh that I remember that. Was, that yeah, was right, that was good. That was when the Cajun Dome was um, the Lakefront Arena, I think. 
You yeah, don't man, get in front of me. Uh, no, that was uh, was that in Rocky or the Best Home Room? No, that was in Louisiana. That was, that was in um, no, New Orleans. Mm. That was the, like, I think that was the New Orleans Lake Front Arena. You're right. Yeah, it was a Lake Front Arena. Now it's the Cajun Dome, but now I think it's wrecked because of Katrina. But, yeah, we had to um, pull CG's match, and I had to go into a uh, match with Havana and Beastie, and, um, no, no, it was Fiji broke Mama's eardrum. It was the other way around. Fiji slapped Mama so hard, she cupped her ear and broke her eardrum. And because Mama oh, couldn't wow. wrestle, she was out. She was out. So I had to, um, you know, um, get into that hula match with with um, Beastie and Havana, and Fiji was really angry that night, and you know she never swears, but she looked me in the <laughs> eye and she said, blank you, MTV, I'm going to kill you, MTV, and she's coming at me with her hands like she's going to choke me, and I believed her, and I didn't let her get her hands on me that entire match, because I knew, and so the end, she got a hold of me at the end and threw me out of the ring, so I survived that, but, but, um, yeah, I just kept stealing her lava lava and talking her with it, and that was that's lava you know, lava. That <laughs> was the only time I had ever seen Fiji lose it. <laughs> I wow! Think she was so upset with uh, you know hurting Mama that she actually hurt someone in the ring because you know she's a gentle giant. She, she, sure she wanted, I've I never heard she that never story. To hurt ah, wow! That was that was I think. The second tour, the first one was in the ice frozen Midwest. That they had no snow removal equipment, and it was the worst snowstorm in 50 years. That was crazy. That was in Clemson, yeah. that was in Clemson, South Carolina. Yeah, yeah. Clemson University, Little John Coliseum. 17 well, inches. I just wanted overnight. to call real quick. I wanted just to say hi to Grammy and hi to MTV and let you guys finish. So I just want to say hi, good night. And just I share my big bad mama story. Okay, love you guys. Roxy, are, are you saying anything about the the fan event coming up? Yeah, we should. Shouldn't we? Should we tease yeah. a little bit? Yeah, well, Roxy, 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 Roxy is organizing a okay, fan Grammy, event. Okay, Grammy knows about this. There is going to be a Kickstarter project, and it's starting actually tomorrow. For It's called the After Glow Fan Party. And we're doing a yeah. Kickstarter, um, 30 days. We have the venue, the girls. I have probably about eight or nine girls that are going to attend, and you're going to be live and up close with the Glow Girls on their first Q&A. It's, it's going to be a big fan party. Um, MTV, you're going to be there, right? Granny, Absolutely. we're going to get you there. Yes. Where is this? I've never heard nothing about this. We're um, interacting with wait, the fans. Who, who is that? Who is that? This is Dallas. Hey, who is that? Who is that? Dallas. Dallas? Dallas. Uh, well, okay, you're invited. Where I'm going to send you something. It's going to be okay. in uh, on, in L.A. Are you in L.A.? No, I'm in Sacramento. Well, we can get you here then. Because I have nobody from Pete. I have nobody from season one except for maybe somebody, but I can't say who it is. So there's the thing is going to go out tomorrow, the Kickstarter. I'm very excited about it. I've been working hard on it, just finishing the artwork and getting things together. And, uh, in fact, I'm doing a few radio shows to promote it. So, MTV, I'm glad you brought that up. So well, yeah, it's, it's in season it's one. In the yeah, this is the the first announcement of it. It's just been in the planning stages, so she hasn't Roxy yeah. hasn't really done a lot of announcing and and but you know so just a lot of working, a lot of working. Okay, yeah. so we're just doing a lot of working. Um, like I said, in this venue, there's only going to be a certain amount of tickets. This is a party for the fans. But the cool thing is, we the Glow Girls, we get to put you fans in the hot seat. We get to ask you questions that we have no idea about. So it's going to be something that's never been done before. It's going to be amazing. So you got to look for it on uh, MTV. You're going to be probably, and Grammy, and Tabby. Um, you guys will advertise it and get it going. Like Absolutely. I said, it's only a 30-day Kickstarter. But I've got surprises also for the Glow Girls, too. Only good surprises. Don't worry. No bad so surprises. So we'll, we'll, be, 
we'll be also promoting it. Roxy's going to send us a link. We'll promote it on our Facebook pages, yep. and we want people to network it like crazy. So, okay. Yeah, I'm going to put it on my VCW page just to get the VCW fans behind it. Uh, okay, I'm and good. can you see how excited the girls are about it? We're not talking about wrestling. We're talking you guys get to know who we really are. Oh. And that's why it's called the Afterglow Fan Party. Party for you, and it's us girls Afterglow. Awesome. So have we told you? You want to go? <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait. It's going to be a ball. I know. You gonna see you there, Michael? How about Michael McCurdy? You going to be there? Um, I'm unfortunately about 13 or 14 hours away from Los Angeles. But uh, yeah, I do start walking let... now. Start walking. I'll start <laughs> walking. Uh, David's got a farther walk than I do, Virginia. though. So. You can bring your I'm going to get going. Michael. I'm about eight hours, Michael. Pick me up on your way. Hey, planned for October. It's planned for October. So this it is planned for October. The Kickstarter happens tomorrow. Like I said, I've been working, waiting on one more little artwork because I'm kind of a perfectionist, and it, everything is from the heart. And we're not raising a lot of money. It's just enough to fly some of the girls in lodging and to actually pay some of the girl, all, all the girls that'll be there. I mean, they have to, you know, get something and make it, you know. But either way, they're giving their time and and, and their stories to the Glow fans. Uh, maybe, maybe, what we can, maybe, 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 maybe what we can do is, is I've got a little thing, uh, and if you're friends with me on Facebook, I run ICW Pro Wrestling down here in Fort Worth, Texas, and starting next week. We have a weekly episodic television show that's going to be all over the internet on YouTube, streaming everywhere. Mm-hmm. Maybe Very I can good. get with you, and maybe we can put the link up in one of our upcoming television shows, and we can get the word out there. Anything to help? Oh, that's perfect. <laughs> and you know what? Too, you'll you'll, you'll like the shirts that we're phone. giving out too, Gremlina. Uh-huh. There's going to be envelopes. There are certain perks that you're either going to get an envelope filled with a kiss with glitter. And that's obviously from the good girls. So you might get an envelope filled with dirt. And that's if you pledge, I think it's $5. I mean, who would want that? <laughs> so also, and and MTV, what are you doing? You're, what are you offering? For the big, big donators, I'm offering a chance for a fan to pose with me, and they get to actually hold my beloved guitar, Elvis. So never Whoa, been done yeah. ever. Yeah, fan mm-hmm. has never gotten to hold Elvis before. So also, yep. I wanted to mention that this is going to be the first in a series of shows that Roxy is planning. Right. Um, so there will there will be chances to go that we're we're supposed we're hoping to take the show on the road and go to other right. cities too. So mm-hmm. this is the first one, and we want to get this kicked off nicely. And, right, Hi, and there's going to be a lot of yeah, a lot of press there, and just like I said, we want the true diehard glow fans there to just really, I mean, start the right one off good. Don't you think? Well, Roxy, I just think your friend request on Facebook so we can chat about it. So. Okay, yeah, do that. Do that. That's great. And Dallas, are you still on? Yes, I am. It's- Okay, do you want me to send you something? I, I thought I did include you because I definitely want a season one girl. Cause maybe I, I want to get to know you, you too. <laughs> I'm your girl. Okay, I'm going to get a hold of you. Okay. Okay? I'll be All looking right, forward so to it. That's great. So we will talk. Is it Mike? Michael it? and David. Michael okay. and David. Get, all right, get a hold of me, and if you have questions, I will answer them. Like I said, Kickstarter should be up tomorrow. And you will see it's, it's very, I think it's pretty funny and humorous and a lot of good stuff. I tell you what, what we will do, 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 do ICWE fans, is as soon as the Kickstarter goes live, we will post the link on IHWE Facebook and the IHWE Radio Facebook page so perfect. everybody can see it. So wait for that tomorrow. Oh, perfect. Sure. You get a free picture. Yay, very good. Well, see, now I'm more quick, excited. Um, Matilda the Hun wanted to be here. She planned on being here, but she had something come up last minute with her grandson, so she wasn't mm-hmm. able to make it, but she sends her regards, so I just wanted to let get that out there let everybody know that she tried to be here. Well, we're going to get everybody uh, back on. We're going to plan for another one of these, maybe before the Kickstarter's over with or maybe when the Kickstarter's done. Maybe we can get all you girls to come back on here and promote the event. 
We would love to have you back. Okay. Do a All series right. well, I, it's I love only, it. I think it's great. Yeah, it's only a 30-day Kickstarter because I honestly, I think we're only raising 5000 That's all we need to get this party going. And cool. I think just want to get it quick and get the first show out there in October, have the venue already. Just it's a matter of getting everything going. And All right. Roxy, and, and this I, is in Southern California? California. Pardon me? One of the donors will not only get an yeah. autographed Gremlina picture, they might even get a call from Gremlina. Well, that's actually on the perks. <laughs> yeah, that's one of the perks. Well, we the, the perks, that, yeah. That, and they might get a call from Roxy Astor, maybe. They could, or, or a wrap, so... Yeah, wait till you see what's on there. But no ankle biting. That's not allowed. I think that's illegal. Okay, I won't eat after midnight. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to say, too, do you I guys know who Janair? Can, can I get do you know who the bite? artist is? Pardon me? Hey, do you guys know who Janair I Javera? I said something. Go ahead. The, Janair oh, Javera. Saying, do you know who the artist extra, is? Can I get the ankle bite? <laughs> oh, gosh. <laughs> Jim Gremlina, just give it to him anyways, all right? I'll get on my belly and shut bite up. your ankle, okay? Yeah, just, just, just to shut him up. There you go. Please, please do, do it. it. If you shut him up, please do it. Just to shut him up. Put a band-aid hey, on it. quiet. Has anyone checked out Gremlina in the Femme to Action um, trailer? It's a sizzle reel. She's so funny. Oh, her oh my God. Was so funny. That was so much fun. Oh my God! I had a I had the best time on that on that uh, yelling. I mean, were you yelling at me, Grammy, or was I yelling at you? I know. I think we you annoyed me the whole weekend. You Rocky annoyed me. I don't know why. <laughs> I yell at everyone. Well, I wasn't exactly calling it yelling. It's more like um, very vehement instruction. <laughs> I'm an equal opportunity offender, you know? All right, ladies. All right. Here we go. We're going to start wrapping this up. We've got to get off the air in a few minutes. But I want to. we're going to do this one at a time, and we'll start letting you all go. I want everybody to get their stuff out there. But for you me and Michael from IXV Radio, we want to thank all of you all for coming on. We want to thank Hollywood for taking and spending a few minutes with us. We want to thank Little Mama for coming on and talking about Big Bad Mama, we want to thank all of you for coming on. Glow was a pop culture phenomenon. I've said it again. That's our phrase tonight. Get that hashtag on Twitter. Okay. And it was awesome. It was awesome to have you all on. So we're going to do this one at a time. Uh, uh, Roxy, uh, yes. plug anything you want to plug, and we'll go down the list starting with you. Okay, we're plugging the Afterglow Fan Party Kickstarter. Starts tomorrow. Everybody look for it. Uh, and the show will be in October, and you will see things on Facebook, and they will be seeing it everywhere. So just want to get everybody excited about that. So awesome. this is well, like where I, I say said. goodbye? <laughs> yes, yes, unfortunately. Oh, Until next time. All right. All right. Goodbye, you guys. <laughs> Thank you, Roxy. Bye. You. Bye. Love you guys. Bye. Love you, Rox. Hey, right, love you. All right, Bye. ladies and gentlemen, we will, uh, as soon as that Kickstarter goes live, we will get that link up on IHWE social media. It'll be a lot, our honor to help out in any way. Uh, MTV, if you're still there, please uh, still- plug something. Plug you want to plug. Well, I just actually want to say thank you so much to the fans, the um, the original fans and the new fans. I just want to send everybody so much love because you guys have have just made our lives. You know, that's that's me talking. I just can't can't believe all the love and everything. And I hope that everybody um, who can gets to come to this show. And um, let's kickstart this fan party tour. Amen. All right. Love you, girl. All right, MTV. Well, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Okay, uh, Grimlina, uh, is there anything you want to plug? Oh, my God. Well, uh, Grimlina will be at uh, 30, July 26th, will be in Milford, Virginia, at VCW, which is Vanguard Championship Wrestling's Liberty Lottery. And all I can say is if you're in the Norfolk and Hampton Roads area, Richmond, anywhere within driving distance, check out this show. It's that big mid-summer event. You never know what shenanigans I pull when I'm at ringside. 
check us out on VCW Hype Machine for episodes. And follow me on Facebook and Twitter, Gramina Glow. And there might be a memoir coming out sometime in the near future. And I also co host a uh, radio show on Blog Talk Radio, Slow Belief Radio. So check me out there. Me and the host of the most Jimmy Dawson. All right, Grimlina, thank you so much, and uh, we will uh, be in touch with you and get updates on everything. Uh, okay, uh, who, who is you. A, thank you. Okay, who is who is left? Dallas, it's, are you still there? That yeah, would be Dallas. Dallas is still here. Dallas, go ahead and plug whatever you'd like to plug. Okay, I'd like to, well, I guess I'm going to plug that Glow After Show, that after party. I'm going to be there, I hope. Um, I'd like to say thank you to all my fans, and I love you so much. And if it weren't for you, we wouldn't be who we are. And I just want to say to all my Glow sisters, I love you very much, and I hope to see you guys soon. And I want to thank you and your partner for putting this on and, and inviting us. Thank you very much. Our pleasure. All right, Anytime. ladies, thank, thank you, you so much. And, uh, and we will be in touch. Thank you both very much. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye, guys. All right, Michael. That was the gorgeous Whew. ladies of wrestling, a plethora, a battle royal of the gorgeous ladies of wrestling just transpired right here on a live edition of IXB Radio. They've got some good stuff coming up. It looks like there's going to be an after party, uh, and it looks like there's going to be a Kickstarter. And like I said, we will get that information all over to you, our fans. Uh, all over the world, West Coast, East Coast, Midwest, whatever, Southwest, and all points in between. Sounds like Michael, you and I need to start uh, walking, man. we got to make it to Los Angeles in October. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if I can do it by Sacramento and pick up Dallas. I don't know if I can make it in October. I'm going to have a busy – we're all going to have a busy weekend at the end of September with the uh, Fall Classic, first ever ICW Fall Classic weekend. I'm working on that right now. There's going to be a whole list of activities going on. Uh, next week, right here on ICB Radio, we are going to have a number of guests, and it's going to be the season premiere of IHWE TV, and it's going to premiere right after this show at 10 p.m. Central Standard Time. Next week, we have a list of people. We have the three competitors who will be wrestling for the Dallas Fort Worth Championship. They're going to be on ICB Radio before... You see their match. Gregory James, Ashton Jacobs, and the international high flying sensation America. Before you see them battle in a triple threat match, you can listen to them here. Also, Sarah Morgan from Lexington Terry. She was the host of the ICW experience and she'll be here giving her two cents on the premiere of ICW T V. Also Video, game, media, personality, former XCW tag team champion and retired professional wrestler, Patrick Scott Patterson, PSP, will be here. He is a social media guru, and he has, has spoken at all the biggest events, South by Southwest, San Diego Comic Con. He's going to be here talking about the impact of IHWE bringing weekly episodic television back to Dallas Fort Worth Wrestling. Also, uh, Southern Wrestling Hall of Famer, the voice of Texas Wrestling, Rob Moore, will be here. I will be joining Michael and the brand-new co-host of ICW Radio. All that next week, plus, thinking, 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 I am going to announce what Charlie Haas, who he will be wrestling on September 28th, I'm going to announce that right here next week, and I'm going to have news on tickets. You need to follow IHW social media in the next few days because I may, I might, I might, depending on my mood, I might start selling tickets for Old School Hustle next Wednesday night during IHW radio. And somebody may have an opportunity. What? I said we're going to auction them off. We may have an opportunity for somebody to win a pair of general admission tickets to ICWE Old School Hustle next week, right before the season premiere of ICWE TV. 
So next week is a can't miss edition, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to get you ready. I'm excited for Michael and his partner in the future of this program. It's going to be amazing. Michael and his partner, who will remain nameless at this time, are working very hard. I'm still going to be with the program. We've got uh, some new people that are going to be coming along. Well, not necessarily new. You heard Brian earlier. He'll be contributing a lot to the program. I'm really uh, – hey, face it. I mean, since January, we have brought you the absolute very best guest legends, some of the best current talent, Adam Pierce, cheerleader Melissa. We've done two nights back-to-back at the Cauliflower Alley Club. We've had the gorgeous ladies of wrestling reunite on this program. We just made history. Last week, we had the Million Dollar Man. We had Jim Cornette. We had the wonderful Connie Gordy. Before that, we've had Kevin Von Erich. We've had Mick Foley, gorgeous Gary Young, Stan Lariat Hansen, Barbara Goodish, Billy Anderson, Dave Meltzer, Robson. Oh, the list goes on and on and on and on and on of the legends, the superstars that we've had on this program. And uh, it's amazing to think we've only been doing this since January, Michael. Oh, definitely, man. I mean, when we first started doing this, I didn't expect we'd have the guest list that we've had. That new graphic that people have been seeing today that got put up, that just shows a small little, you know, selection of the people we've had on. And we've got some big guests coming on uh, in a few months. I'm working with my new production assistant. He's going to be helping book guests. I can tell you now at this point, confirm for August 20th, we're going to have uh, Rudy Boy Gonzalez who was the oh, head trainer boy. at the Shawn Michaels Wrestling Academy. I know Rudy and very well. Also, yes, and also for those of you out there, trained a man that we all know very well as Daniel Bryan. He was one of the trainers, so I'm looking forward to having him on. And on Rudy August Boy is one of the most – Rudy Boy, not to cut you off, Rudy Boy is probably the best trainer in the state of Texas. He, tra- he helped train Brian Kendrick, Lance Cade, uh, uh, Daniel Bryan. Yes. Uh, just he he was there, and he's a Texas wrestling veteran. Uh, me and Rudy don't always see eye to eye on everything, but I have the utmost respect for Rudy Boy Gonzalez. And uh, he was uh, I actually wrestled with him in 2011 in a tag team match. And uh, he is a uh, Rudy is uh, Rudy's Rudy, but uh, I believe he's got a lot to offer. So he should have a good interview. A lot of stories. So oh, definitely. Also, August 27th, we're going to be starting with the new IHW Radio. We're going to be starting an indie spotlight. So if there are any listeners out there who know of any top indie wrestlers you feel should have a chance to come on here and be interviewed by my new co-host and myself, please send those names to IHWRadio at gmail.com. August 27th, our first indie wrestling spotlight will be on Miss Dyslexia. She's been a guest on our show. She's also appearing at Old School Hustle, I believe. So, yes. Correct me if I'm wrong. She'll be a showdown. <laughs> she'll be a, she'll be she's a former IHWE tag team champion. Her and Angel Blue wrestled for the IHWE tag team championship back in two thousand eight and they won. So she is a former IHW tag team yes. champion. So And she is our first indie fact. wrestling spotlight, August twenty seventh. And also I have to tell you that I told you about this a few days ago. I gotta bring this up because I think this is gonna be great. September third or September 10th, we're still working on that date. But in September, we are going to have on, from Global Wrestling Federation, the group there, none other than Chaz. And if anybody remembers Chaz, he wrestled men such as the Lightning Kid, Jerry Lynn, all those names that went on to bigger careers in the WWE and everything. He was there for at the beginning. He was also part of something that David and I bring up on a regular basis, the bungee cord match. And he has agreed to talk to us and go behind the scenes of the bungee cord match. Oh, I don't know. The radio I don't know. Uh, you know, there might be a night that I tune out, you know, <laughs> to hear about the bungee cord match. Also, September 28th, live in Fort Worth, Texas, Old School Hustle, I, the pre-show is going to be exclusive to ICB Radio. So we're actually going to have matches. We're going to make history again, just like we did tonight, just like we're making next week, and on and on. We're going to make history on ICW Radio because we're going to have actual Michael and Michael's mystery man, his new partner. We're going to be calling the play-by-play of the matches that are going to be happening 
to kick off Old School Hustle. So we're going to have Max's on IW Radio. And the following Monday, the day after, a special IW Radio entitled The Day After. There won't be an IW Radio that Wednesday because Michael is going to be at Michael and his new partner. They're going to be coming to Texas. They're going to have a long flight back home. I'm going to be exhausted. And uh, But we will have back-to-back ICB radio, just like we did back in June at the CAC, Sunday, October tw- uh, <laughs> Sunday, September 28th, and Monday, September 29th. Shut up, Michael. We'll have a pre-show <laughs> at Old School Hustle and then the day after on Monday the 29th. And like I said, we're working on a lot of, a lot of events that weekend, a breakfast, a dinner, anti-bullying, a video game tournament. Uh, we're working on so many things. It's going to be a big weekend. Limousine for the IWE radio host. Uh, for your partner, no. maybe. Right. <laughs> All right. As long as I'm not well, sleeping in James Beard barn, okay, we're good. <laughs> I was gonna say I'm gonna try to sweet talk Cornette and see if he can stay in his room, but uh, he may depend. Uh, the, uh, considering how your last interaction with Cornette went, not last week, but the first time Cornette was on this show, you may have to you may have to buy a whole lot of merch. <laughs> what, what did I ever do to you? I'm looking forward to meeting Jim Cornette, but I'm just gonna wave at him from across the room. Hey, Jim, how you doing? Hey. I'm not so, getting close. But anyway, <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna wrap this up. Uh, this has been a great show. We want to thank all the gorgeous ladies of wrestling for coming on tonight. Uh, MTV, Roxy, Hollywood, Little Mama, uh, Grimlina, Dallas, Michael. Am I forgetting anybody? Um, uh, I don't think so. No, I think we got a... I don't think. If I am, I do apologize. We had more people calling tonight than uh, as far as guests. Than we've ever had, so uh, it was awesome. So uh, hopefully, uh, hopefully this show gets a whole lot of pubs. So anyway, uh, everybody, thank you. Uh, next week's my last week permanently as a co-host here. I've had a blast. It's been great getting this program off the ground. Uh, I don't know what I'm going to do with myself on Wednesday. I have a clue. Uh, Listen to ICWE Radio. That's what you're going to well, do. Well, if, 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 if Lucas if Lucas allows it. Then maybe, maybe, but he's getting to the age, he's getting to the point now to where he just wants to talk and make spit noises with his mouth. So, uh, I'll bring anyway, him on the show then as my co-host. So I you might, might bring him. I might, I'm, I might bring him on the show. He might be a better co-host than me. So, bring him on next anyway, week, man. Daddy's last night as permanent I'm co-host. Not, Let Lucas make his I, radio I, debut. I, I'm I might have him. to do that. Okay, you're inviting Lucas. Okay. Well, anyway, thank everybody. <laughs> ICB now, ICB now.com. Make sure we've had a influx of YouTube subscriptions this week. Everybody is getting their subscription ready. Uh, if you haven't done so yet, please do so. Go to YouTube.com backslash IHWE2009 and subscribe because next Wednesday night at 10 o'clock, that way you can watch ICB TV from whatever device you want. But go now. We uh, we're at 199 subscriptions. We're one away from 200, and that's great. So uh, if you're going to watch it from a PC or desktop, you can go to icwenow.com. You can go to icwenow on Facebook. You can go to the ICWE Radio Facebook. It will be on a number of different platforms next Wednesday at 10 p.m., wherever you are. Let's make some history together, ladies and gentlemen. Let's do this. Okay, let's 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 together, everybody. I think it's gonna be great. You're gonna see a hell of a match. You're gonna see three guys, three individuals who are gonna make a huge clashing kick the door in on the independent scene going for the D F W championship. If you loved wrestling, the old style wrestling back in the day here, you're gonna love ICWE. So anyway, ICWE now dot com. I'm at i I'm at H six C Fuller on Twitter. Michael, it's been a pleasure, my friend. Oh, as always, man, I always enjoy these shows. It's going to be a little weird this after next week, not working with you every weekend, but you and I will still definitely be working behind the scenes on a regular basis. So on top of everything else going on next week with the Triple Threat, uh, the members of the Triple Threat match is going to be on here next week, and the other name.
names you mentioned. I can't remember them all. I know Patrick Scott Patterson. I remember that name. PSP. I know he's coming. Um, we also have. We're still working on it. Crossing the you know dotting the i's, crossing the t's. You and I have a major announcement regarding IHWE coming next week as well. So people are going to want to tune in for that. That also includes my mystery man, as you call him. But uh, yeah, next week, you're going to see a whole new direction for ISWE Radio and a new direction for ISWE in general. It's going to be a big show. Next week will be the week to tune in. Um, you can find me on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash Encyclopedia World Class. You can find me on Twitter at MichaelMC1972. I am not on YouTube. I'm not on Instagram. I'll be on YouTube because I'm going to be at Old School Hustle, which is part of a TV taping, so I, I might make an appearance then. Then I'll be on YouTube. But for right now, I'm your host, and I'm signing off. And for David and myself, thank you for joining us. We'd like to thank you all the Glow Girls for joining us. Please tune in next week for David's final show. It's going to be a little tear-jerking. I might have to bring my hanky. But next week, ISW Radio, 8 p.m. Central, 6 p.m. Pacific. We'll talk to you then. Goodbye, everybody. <laughs>